We'll do it next time. Thank you. Perfect timing. Thank you, Jerry, for the beginning music. Good morning. Shalom, yes. Welcome to worship this morning. It's great to see you. This is the seventh Sunday of Easter. It's the Sunday. It happens every season of Easter where we listen into a portion of Jesus' prayer to his father. It's sort of like eavesdropping in on what he has to say. Thursday is Ascension Day. That's the day of the church, that the church celebrates Jesus' return to the father. Next Sunday, it's Pentecost. And I have a quiz question. What color do we wear? What do we celebrate? The Holy Spirit, the beginning of the church. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see. What else? We have a couple birthdays today. Sandra Burroughs and uh, Carol Steves. It's going to be fun to celebrate. They, they are um, council members, as you know, makes it extra special. We're going to sing to. Yes. Hey, Paris is the 31st. We can do it on Pentecost Sunday. We'll all wear red in honor of Kay on Pentecost Sunday. Uh, today, our worship leaders are assisting minister is Sandra. Reader is Bev. I know she's here. There she is. Um, communion team. Uh, oh, I'm going to do the bread. Sandra's going to do the wine. And I don't see Trink. So we need someone to volunteer to do the wine. Does someone want to do that? Oh, yes. Carol's going to do it. Excellent. Thank you. Our musicians today are Jerry and Dennis and Dale. I'm so glad to see him. I didn't expect to see him. And as you see, there are some um, people here who are visiting. You have to figure out who they are and you need to say hello to them, okay? And also I noticed there's a woman in the back wearing red and black who looks very different. She's not a visitor. I think it's Pat. Did you get a haircut? <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's, it's wonderful. You look so cute. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, any other announcements that we need to say? I, oh, I forgot on a very, very important one. On Saturday afternoon at two o'clock, we'll celebrate the life of God's servant, Vern Shonsby. As I said, it begins at two on Saturday. I hope you can come. He has made in his journey with us in this congregation. It's been long and he's done so many things for this church. It's a way to honor him and his family if you can come that uh, Saturday at two. All right, any, any other announcements? I'm sure I'm forgetting stuff. I know um, we've got two birthdays, as I said, so we're gonna sing happy birthday. Carol and Sandra. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Sandra and Carol. Happy birthday to you. Beautiful. Happy birthday, all of you. Are you guys 15 this year? Of course, that's very good. I'm glad. Is that right? 15? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Okay. We're, uh, we're time for our uh, prelude by Jerry.
How beautiful. Thank you. We'll continue now with the greeting and peace. Please stand. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And also with you. Our gathering hymn is Morning Has Broken. continue with the confession and forgiveness. Please notice that the assisting minister is helping with this. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Amen. Let us come into the light, the revealing and healing light of God. God of grace and glory, you have brought, brought us through the night of sin into the light of Jesus' resurrection. resurrection. Yet our lives are still shadowed by sin. Make us alive in Christ, O God. Make us new as we make all things new. Rescue us from evil and the gloom of sin. Renew us in grace and restore us to living in your holiness. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Rejoice with all creation around God's throne. The light of the risen Christ puts to flight all evil deeds, washes away sin, restores innocence to the fallen, casts out hate, brings peace and humbles earthly pride. Jesus loves you and frees you from your sins by his blood. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our hymn of praise is to be your presence.
prayer of the day. Let us pray. God of glory, your son Jesus Christ suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and in joy, that all the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Special music by Jerry and Dennis. And Jerry, you have a thing to say, don't you? Yes. Yes. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> this is the last Hallelujah Sunday of Easter. And so we thought we would bring back the Easter hallelujah that uh, you have enjoyed. I don't like to wear it out, but I could sing it every week. So we're using the version we did week two, but we're adding a little because Pentecost is coming. So when I 
to my God above and see Christ's face and feel his love, what overwhelming joy will pass right through me. I'll thank him for his sacrifice, for what he did to pay the price, and never cease my singings of hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Today. The first reading today is from the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 6 to 14. Today's reading is a part of the introduction to the narrative of the outpouring of the Spirit of Pentecost. These verses tell of the risen Lord's conversation with his disciples on the, uh, the eve of his ascension. The reading. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly but devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord. Please read Psalm 68 verses 1 to 10 and 32 to 35 responsibly. Let God arise and let God's enemies be scattered. Let those who hate God flee. As smoke is driven away, 
so should drive them away. As the wax melts before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. Sing to the God, sing praises to God's name. Exalt the one who rides the clouds. I am is that name. Rejoice before God. In your holy habitation, O God, you are a father to orphans of widows. You give the solitary a home and bring forth prisoners into freedom. But the rebels shall live in desert places. O God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked and the skies poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. You sent a bountiful rain, O God. You restored your inheritance when it languished. Your people found their home in it. In your goodness, O God, you have made provision for the poor. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. You ride in the heavens, O God, in the ancient heavens. You send forth your voice, your mighty voice. Ascribe power to God, whose majesty is over Israel, whose strength is in the skies. How wonderful you are in your holy places, O God of Israel, giving strength and power to your people. Blessed be God. The second reading is from 1 Peter, chapter 4, verses 12 to 14, and chapter 5, verses 6 to 11. Our faith in Christ does not make us immune from the scorn of others. Nevertheless, we are to resist the designs of evil when we experience disparagement from others, because we trust God's grace will strengthen and guide us. The reading. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Stay alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen and establish you to him be the power forever and ever amen the word of the lord thanks be to god thank you time for dale hooray hooray Good morning. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. 
when I feel afraid and think I've lost my way. Still you're there right beside me. Nothing will I fear as long as you are near. Please be near me to the end. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will not forget your love for me and yet my heart is forever wandering jesus be my guide and hold me to your side i will love you saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. As grace said taught me saved thus far and grace my source relieved how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed
Oh, that was wonderful. Thank you, Dale. Thank you very much. The final reading for today is the gospel according to John, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had spoken these words to his disciples, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so that son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those you have given me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I've given to them and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you and they have believed that you sent me. I'm asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me because they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world and I'm coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We just heard Jesus' prayer asking the Father that we may be one. Jesus prayed on the night before he'd suffer and die, knowing that his followers would betray, deny, and desert him, knowing that the world was filled with pain and violence and death. And Jesus prayed for you and me and for them. On this seventh Sunday of Easter, we sort of eavesdrop on this prayer, which scholars call the high priestly prayer. This prayer is timeless. It's important for us to know now. It's important for us now to know that it's for us too. When Jesus prayed it 2000 years ago, it was in the upper room on the first Monday, Thursday, right before he was crucified. On that night, the mood was heavy with grief. Jesus had just washed his disciples' feet, fed them bread and wine, promised them the Holy Spirit, and commanded them to love one another. Jesus knew his time was running out. So in those last moments, right before his arrest, Jesus prayed to the Father, his heart's deepest desire. Jesus said, I am asking, I am asking. This prayer of Jesus has been called the other Lord's Prayer. And we don't memorize this one, but I'm grateful for that. It's not in Luther's small catechism. We don't recite it on Sunday. This prayer isn't poetic like the Our Father, Our Father. This high priestly prayer, this other Lord's prayer is long. It's a sort of stream of consciousness narrative. Yet in it, there's this amazing time bending, eternity kind of thing. For Jesus prayed, not just for his first listeners, not so long ago, but also for you and me right now and for his listeners yet to be born. This should give us goosebumps. In this prayer, Jesus did more than teach. He opened his heart as he spent his last moments pleading for God to care and protect you and all of his followers. In many ways, that's his last act of earthly act of love for us. 
he didn't awe his followers with miracles or humble them by his divine authority and power. No, Jesus prayed and surrendered all of his followers, including us, to God's hands. I am asking, Jesus says. This sentence, this sentence I am asking, contains a present continuous predicate. I had to look that up. In it, it's in this verb form, we see the eternity thing where Jesus was, is, and always will be asking, asking for us. Jesus is eternally praying these words, Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. The Reverend Tom, Debbie Thomas, who is wonderful, wrote, Jesus is praying, God, I don't know what you will do with my request, but I'm staking my life and the lives of all my beloved on you. Because there's literally nothing more I can do on my own. I've come to the end of what I can hold and guard and save. So I am asking. Jesus is asking. He was asking, is asking, and will be asking for us. In our troubled world, what are we asking? I think it's important to remember that Jesus on this last night, he's the very son of God, but he spent his last moments praying. For our Lord knew when all else falls away, prayer remains. And that's true for us too. In hard and in good times, prayer provides us a way to connect ourselves with God, to lift our concerns to him and plea for his grace. Certainly in his prayer, Jesus was asking for many things, but this one request stands out. Jesus is asking that they, all of his followers may be one, that we may be one. It's been said that this is, this unity, this is a description of eternal life. In today's reading, Jesus said that eternal life is to know God. To know God includes to know his loving ways. And it's in God's love that we're bound together. Binds us in, together into one. As we heard last Sunday, on that same night that Jesus prayed this prayer, he commanded his disciples to love one another so that everyone will know that they, that we are his followers. This love is the test of our faith and our identity. This binding of one to another is the way others will know who we are and whose we are. That's how we make God's love known, how we embody Jesus to others. That's how we make him real to this dying world. If we aren't loving, these others may think that Jesus and his death and resurrection, just a myth. That this broken world is always cold and meaningless, ungoverned by a compassionate God. That the church is flawed and hypocritical. That it's not Christ living and healing body on earth. That's the power of this love that Jesus commands. That's the responsibility that we bear, whether we want it or not. To be clear, praying that the church would be one as Jesus and the Father are one, doesn't mean that we're all uniform. But it does mean that we must be committed to our Lord's love and to love others. This binding love that binds us into unity. This unity is so important that 2,000 years ago, Jesus spent his last moments praying for it. Right now, the followers of Jesus, you and me, are kind of faltering in some ways. So this prayer remains as important today as it did 2,000 years ago. You and I are called to echo this prayer for unity. I've included a prayer that we could pray for this unity. It's on, I think it's page eight under the sermon heading. Please find it if you can. And let's, I'm going to read it to you, but why don't you read it with me? Let us pray. Draw your church together, O oh God, into one great company of disciples, 
together following our teacher, Jesus Christ, into every walk of life, together serving in Christ's mission to the world, and together witnessing to your love wherever you will send us. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. It's time to sing our next hymn. I think Gary has a few words to say about that, but you could stand in the meantime. Just a short. Vene Sancte Spirit, to his Holy Spirit, come to us. Um, I'm mumbling in my beard again. Pardon me. It's so short, so it really doesn't echo. This prayer, it is a Vene Sancte Spiritus, come Holy Spirit, has some descants that go with it. So I'm asking you to be the choir. I'm going to sing along with you three times. We'll do a total of five. Jerry will keep going. But as you start the fourth, I'm picking out just the first descant to sing with you to end. Holy Spirit, come to us. 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 Come, Holy Spirit, from heaven shine forth with your glorious light. Holy Spirit, come to was beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful job. I need someone to go into the sacristy and find the, the elements, the, uh, the bread element. We don't have the wafers. Oh, there they are. Uh, it's like an answer to prayer right there. See? Uh, amen, indeed. Thank you, my dear. Better take this with me. Thank you. That's okay. All right. Offering prayer. No, it's parents of intercession. What are we on? I got so disturbed. Yes, thank you. I needed that help. We joined with congregations around the world to confess our faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy, Holy Catholic, Catholic Church, Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of harmony, as you drew your son to your side, you draw us to you and unite us with the planet and one another. Weave your church together in a web of mutual love for the sake of the world. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. As your spirit hovered over the waters of creation, so your spirit hovers over all that you have made. Bless the water that sustains the planet 
and grant wisdom to use it wisely. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You empower your people with the fire of your spirit. Challenge activists and organizers, teachers and politicians, and all in leadership to speak a message of peace and justice. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You care for all your children. Show your steadfast love to those suffering isolation, especially exiles, refugees, or prisoners. Break the chains of all held fast by systemic oppression of any kind. Comfort all who are afraid or suffering from illness. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We give thanks that humankind serves as your body in the world, stewarding your abundant gifts. Guide this congregation's leader as they seek your will. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We want to remember those on our prayer concerns list, members and friends of Calvary, Trink, Ursula, Sandra, Carlos, Christina, Ted, and Jackson. Our per members and friends serving in the military, Terry Egan, U.S. Army. Our partners in ministry, Christ Lutheran Church. Our saviors, Emmanuel Lutheran. Lutheran Church of Arcata, Grace Good Shepherd, Reverend Claire S. Burkett, Interim Bishop, Sierra Pacific Synod, and ELCA Bishop Elizabeth Eaton. You raise your saints to new life in Christ. We give you thanks for all your saints who have given us glimpses of your redeeming love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. It's time for special music by Jerry. Thank <laughs> you. 
What a blessing you are, Jerry. Thank you. Please stand. Let us pray, generous God. In this meal, you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of the earth. In the breaking of this bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour us out in service to the world. Through Christ our Lord, amen. amen. We'll prepare for the receiving of the elements of communion through the thanksgiving at the table. So together, we make the sign of the cross as these words are said. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy, living, and loving God, we praise you for creating the heavens and the earth. We bless you for bringing Noah and his family through the waters of the flood for freeing your people Israel from the bonds of slavery and for sending your son to be our redeemer. We give you thanks for Jesus, who living among us healed the sick and fed the hungry. Then with the love stronger than death, he gave his life for others. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me, the body of Christ given for you. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me, the blood of Christ shed for you. Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life, that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The communion blessing for those who have communion. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. And now an invitation for all the rest of you. The table of life is spread before you. We feast on the goodness and mercy of God. The table is set and all are welcome.
Let us pray. Please stand. We give you thanks, O God, that you make your home with us, bringing heaven to earth in this holy meal. Fill us with your spirit as we go from here, that we may wipe away tears, tend to those in mourning and pain. Seek the healing of the nations and bring to earth the presence of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Our ascending hymn is joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Let's sing that with joy. Sadness. 
that was joyful. <laughs> the final blessing, yes. God, the God of all who raised Jesus from the dead, bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. And please be seated, the posu by Jerry. Hmm? Oh, yes, you announce it. Seems, seems like we started something a couple weeks ago. So Post Lude is going to be, and feel free to sing with us. God be with you till we meet again. <laughs> For the final dismissal, we are going to plan a nostalgic summer and we're going to bring back a lot of the hymns and this will be one of our uh, postludes. We're going to rotate like three or four of them. And so I think it will be something to look forward to this uh, coming summer. And I'm going to ask you next week to tell me your favorite old hymns. They've got to be old hymns and um, what liturgies you like, and maybe stories from the past. And if you have pictures from the past of, of this wonderful congregation, let's, make, let's celebrate who we are, because we're just amazing, this sweet, sweet place. OK, are you can go now. I'm so sorry. Silvers, please unmute. Hallelujah. Christ is written. Christ, Christ is, is reigning in me. Hallelujah. You are the body of Christ, raised up for the world. Go in peace. Make God's love known. Ready? Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Thanks be to God. Amen. 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 Oh, you do such a wonderful Amen. job. Thank you very much for all that all that you all do. It's just amazing. And I think it's time we celebrate some of that. And so that's what we're going to do this. I think we're going to start. We'll collect all this stuff during June and we'll start doing the nostalgic summer in July, August, and September. It'll be fun. So let's let's do it. Now, have a great week. Bye-bye. Remember uh, Vern's service, 2 o'clock this Saturday.